Good morning. I've been making these videos for my Facebook page for my tutoring service, and I thought I'd uh, try to put together uh, another series of videos that um, really tries to do more methodical uh, take on the Calc 84. Okay, so what I have right here is just a screenshot image of off of my phone of what the Calc 84 looks like. And uh, so this was what it would look like on my on my phone. I took that and that's the that's the version of it that I normally use. Uh, I'm normally working off of my phone. I'm going to use uh, the one that is also available to put on a Chromebook uh, in the making of this video. And so the format of that will be slightly different uh, from what you're seeing here right now. Um, but let me just while I'm here on this screen, let me just point out some uh, various features that that are on here. The first thing that I want to really point out is is just the simple fact that if you pick up a TI-84 calculator and then you use this on your phone, you're going to be looking at essentially the same thing. Now, when you use this calculator, there's going to be some, some differences. Really what there's going to be is there's additional features on the Calc 84 that you will not have on your TI-84. And that's both that's both a benefit and it could, uh, in a sense, be something that could be harmful to you as a student if you become over-reliant on these features that you would not have available to you, let's say, on a test, if you're allowed to use a calculator on the test. Okay, so first of all, <clears throat> for those of you unfamiliar with, uh, with graphing calculators, let me, before I get to where I'm actually just punching buttons, let me point out some key things on here. The equal sign, on a TI-84 or a Calc-84 is the enter button. So when you press enter, it's going to go ahead and do your calculation for you. Um, when you want to type in the most common variable that we use in, uh, in algebra or calculus or geometry or whatever, whoops, and I pointed to the wrong button. I meant to point to this one. Uh, the most common letter that we use is the letter X. And so whenever we're inputting an expression or an equation or something like that, and we want to access uh, X, that's the button that we'll use. Now notice there's a T, a theta, and an N. Those are uh, more advanced type things for doing uh, what are called parametric uh, equations, polar equations, things along those lines. And uh, so I may never get to doing a video on those or, or I may. So, um, let me clear what I have here so far. Now, additional buttons that I want to point out to you right now so that you won't be confused when I'm using them. Uh, another button is this one right here, the caret. That's the power. That's the power button. So if I want to do, for example, uh, x to the third power, then I'm going to type in x here. And then I'll press the caret button. And then it'll put a little box here. I'll be demonstrating that here in a little bit. And then I would type in the three to have the X cubed. Now here's, here's an interesting thing. If you use the caret button, after you type in the three, if you don't hit the right arrow button, anything you type after that will be up in the superscript for the exponent. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that for you here in just a minute. Okay, so let's see. Are there any other things I feel like I need to, to make sure I talk about right now? Well, I don't know that probably in this first video that I'm doing, I probably won't deal with this. But if you are looking right away to graph something, the Y equals button is uh, the primary way that you're going to go about doing that. But it's not the only way you can get things graphed on here. There's a really super cool way uh, an easy way to grab things on here as well. And I might touch on that in this video. Okay, so let's have that be just kind of the most basic introduction here. And I'm sure you're probably looking at this calculator if you've never used a TI-84 or a graphing calculator. You might be a little bit overwhelmed. It you, You'll get used to it rather quickly. Now, the, the trick here is going to be that when I um, get ready to... Uh, switch over to this other calculator, the format's a little bit different. So what it does is when you put it onto the screen of a Chromebook, then it spreads it out. 
And I like that because my Chromebook is a touch screen. And so I can just touch the, the buttons on here and it will perform the, the operations that I want to do. So anyway, let me just go through and just do a couple quick things. Let me show you. I was just a minute ago talking about doing exponents on here. So if I want to do, let's say, six to the third power, then I hit the six. And let's see, I can make this bigger so that in the video you'll be able to see better. Okay, I'm just hitting the plus button in the upper right hand corner to enlarge that. So I have six and notice that it makes a little box there and there's a flashing cursor and I put in the three. Now, if I kept typing up there, and by the way, notice on here, it immediately uh, gives you uh, a value for six to the third power. If you're using a TI-84, you don't get that until you hit the enter button. Okay, so, but if I kept typing, you know, let's say I wanted to put a plus sign in here it puts it up here. Okay. So if I don't want that, oh, and one thing I didn't talk about was how you backspace in on here in the second row in the third column, there's a, there's a delete button. So I'm going to hit that kind of takes me back to this. Okay. So if I wanted to, let's say, add to this expression, then I'm going to hit the right arrow button and it brings me down. And let's say I wanted to say plus, um, I don't know, let's say five to the seventh power. Okay. And so it's giving me the solution, the value for six to the third plus five to the seventh, 78,341. If I hit enter, then that operation is done. So now, for example, if I wanted to take that previous answer and let's say add something to that, well, if I hit the uh, second, and then if you look in the lower right hand corner underneath the negative sign, it says answer. If I do that plus, let's say five, then it will take my previous answer and just add five to that. Okay. So, so those are some, those are the basic methodologies for just entering basic expressions in. So I had also shown how to put in uh, values for X. Okay. And I, there is something that I think in this first video, I think it's worth showing right off the bat. If you're in an algebra class, very often you're working with expressions, let's say a quadratic. Okay. So I'm going to type in X squared. Now for the squared button, I don't typically use the caret and do a two. There's an actual X squared button. So I'm just going to hit squared. Let's say plus, uh, I think I'll, I'll make one here that's uh, factorable. So 8x, 8x, and let's see, plus 12. Okay, so there's an expression, all right? Now, I don't have it in the y equals menu, which is on the TI-84, where you would put that if I wanted just to graph it. Let's say, though, instead, I just want to sort of know what's going on with this expression. I'm going to type, uh, that's not what I meant to do. So I'm going to hit second mode, and that'll quit. Take me right back to here. I meant to hit the details uh, button, which the details button is in the window. It's in the lower left-hand corner. I'm going to hit details. And so it gives me all of this information. So it gives me the input expression. It gives me a calculated result. What is that? Well, in this particular case, um, it gives me the factored form of x squared plus 8x plus 12. And it puts it in a format that we don't normally write a factor. It, normally, we would write it as x plus 2 times x plus 6. But then it also gives me the graph down here. So I'm going to pinch and squeeze here to, to bring it in a little bit. With the uh, Chromebook, you can just resize you know, the normal way with... Uh, your fingers. You can also, uh, there's other ways you can do it. I'm not going to go into those right now. Now for advanced users, if you click more and it takes you down here, uh, there's some things that would be helpful to a calculus student, for example. Um, it gives the derivative with respect to x. And so uh, that would be 8 plus 2x or 2x plus 8. It gives the definite integral. Uh, now, for those who are in calculus, you'll know what I mean by this. When it gives the definite integral, I'm sorry, indefinite integral, when it gives the indefinite integral, it does not 
list a constant of integration. So if you were just going to, you know, say, hey, what's the indefinite integral for this, you know, and you were doing it for an AP calculus class, you would want to make sure you put plus C on there. And that's not what I want to do. Instead, what I wanted to do is be able to see where it says minimize. Now, actually, that's something that would be helpful to even an Algebra 1 student. Where it says minimize there, that's giving the global minimum, the absolute minimum for this function. In other words, for a parabola, a quadratic, the absolute minimum will be the vertex of the parabola. Well, it just gives the x coordinate. So you could use this to get the x coordinate. So, and you can see in the graph, uh, I'm going to pinch it and kind of resize things a little bit here. But you can, you can kind of see that the vertex of this parabola is at about negative 4. Notice it also in the graph gives the x-intercepts at negative 6 and negative 2, which is what we'd expect from the factored form, which this also gave us. Okay, so this is where, and I'm going to probably say this in every video that I make on Calc 84, this is where I'm going to caution students do not be over-reliant on the features of Calc 84 that are not going to be available to you in the classroom. In other words, you know, just as a dumb example on this one, I'm sure most of you could factor x squared plus 8x plus 12. But if you can't and you think, well, it doesn't really matter, I can just uh, get the result from this. Well, that's fine on your homework and all that kind of thing. But then when it comes to a test, a quiz, et cetera, if you're not allowed to use something like this, then you're going to be in trouble. So use this with discretion. My suggestion is, is that you're using this in order to check your work, see if you're uh, moving along the right lines and, uh, and, and use it so that you are learning as opposed to just learn, uh, using it as a crutch. Okay. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. And um, if you are at any time in need of tutoring assistance, I do tutoring online and you can contact me uh, with the contact information below. Thank you.